Good morning. good morning. So good to see you all today. I'm so glad that we can be together. Please remember that no matter where you are or who you are on life's spiritual journey, you're always welcome to worship with us here at Wilton Congregational Church. As you know, I'm Reverend Ann. I'm the senior minister. I'm going to take off my mask so you can hear what I'm saying. Um, a big welcome to all of you who are here today in our sanctuary and to those of you who are watching us online. Today in our worship service, you'll be hearing from our Minister of Christian Formation, Caroline Ainsworth Hughes, Deacons Miller Rowley and Sharon Thawley, and our Director of Music, Eugene Sorotkin, our bell choir, which you already heard, and soprano Callie Sorrento are providing our music today. A big thank you to Paul Schmidt and Brian McDonald, who are managing our AV system this morning. Today, at the end of our worship service, our ushers will dismiss you from the pews, um, and you can leave your offering in the back. There's a, a basket there or a plate where you can leave your offering as you leave. Also today, we're celebrating Holy Communion. So um, for those of you watching online, please have some juice and a cracker or bread nearby. And those of you here in our pews, make sure you have one of these fellowship cups, these communion pods, I call them. If you do not have one, there are many out here, and you can come and get one um, before communion starts. Just a quick reminder about registering for our worship services. As I'm looking around, I'm seeing that most of you did register today, so that makes me very happy. Um, it's important that we have an accurate count of the number of people who are coming to the worship service and also what their names are. And last week, we had only about 50% of the people who worshiped with us had registered. And you did a lot better this week, so good for you. Um, but please remember to register through our weekly e-news. Um, you can click on a link there or go to our website and register. Go to Realm if you've got the Realm app and register. If you have any problem registering, just email me and I can register you, but that's very important. Now we've got many opportunities for missions projects going on. Look how much we've gotten for our 500, I can hardly move this thing, but we, you should take a look at it. Our children have been coming in with their change and putting, um, putting their change in there that they've been collecting in their coin boxes. There's also bills in there. And we, um, we're thinking that we have about 150 meals paid for already. So we want to get to that 500 meals goal, which is $2.50 a meal. So I encourage you to give. You can also bring your change and put it in here. You can go to our website and give that way. You can click on the e-news on the e-news on a link at our e-news, and you can also go to Realm to give to our 500 miles for 500 meals project, which will give um, 500 people a Thanksgiving meal this year. So please take part in that. And also today is the start of our coat drive. 
It's today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. You can gather up your coats, old coats, hats, scarves, mittens, and drop them off outside the church. And we will be putting all those all together and taking them to agencies that will deliver them to people who need warm clothing this winter. You know how much we love to hear from you. So please keep in touch and give us your prayer requests. Keep us updated with your best contact information so that we can get in touch with you. And uh, we want to make sure that you know everything that's going on in the life of WCC. Let us now worship God together with joy. Oh, I'm glad to be doing a children's message for some of my friends who I know are up in the balcony and down on, on the ground and worshiping with us online. And I know yesterday was a big event and a big kids holiday. And I know I got to see a lot of you in your Halloween costumes last week, and I hope you got to be with your families safely yesterday. But today's another really important day, especially in the life of our church. Today, we're celebrating All Saints Day, which means together as a family of faith, we are remembering everyone who we've lost, especially in the past year, but really all the time. Because we know as a family of faith, we worship together, we celebrate together, and we mourn together too. And part of remembering means we say names and we tell stories, we eat favorite foods, and we get to think about all the people that we've loved and pets too that we've missed and aren't with us anymore. And so today in your worship bags, I'm also borrowing from another tradition, same holiday, from our friends down in Mexico who celebrate the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. And on that day, our friends, they, they celebrate, they, they leave offerings, they talk about special meals, and they fold paper flowers. So that's what's in your activity bag. And I thought maybe you could draw on each piece of tissue paper or write the name of someone we've lost. It doesn't have to be within the past year. It could be a grandparent or a pet, someone you know that we are thinking of today and holding in our hearts and knowing that God is holding in our hearts too. And the way you do that is you stack those pieces of paper, six or eight of them together, you fold them like a fan, you put your paper pipe cleaner around the middle, and then you open up each layer. And as you do, we'll be saying prayers and thinking about those people that we are remembering today. So I'm celebrating All Saints Day with you. I'm thinking about the people that we've lost, that we love, that aren't with us, but are definitely in our hearts, and that we know God is holding to. Would you say a prayer with me? Gracious God, our hearts are full. We know that as, as just as we are saying the names and telling the stories of people that we have loved who are not with, with us right now, that you are holding us and you are holding them. So help us today remember to hold one another, to come together as a family of faith here and wherever we are gathered, that we might celebrate those who are not with us and celebrate your love for all of us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I can take my mask off. Uh, the scripture lesson for today is from the Revelation to John, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, in the New Testament portion of your Bible. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no man could number, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed to me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? I said to them, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their clothes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night within his temple. And he who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the scripture lesson.
Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations that are in each of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So there was this elderly couple, and after 60 years of marriage, they both passed away on the same day. When they reached the pearly gates, St. Peter took them to their mansion, and they went out back and they saw a championship golf course, just like the one that was behind their earthly home. St. Peter told them that they had their golfing privileges every day, and that each day the course changed to a new one, representing the great golf courses on earth. The man asked, but what are the greens fees? And St. Peter said, this is heaven. You play for free. So next, they went to the clubhouse and they saw this lavish buffet lunch spread out. All the cuisines of the world were represented. How much does this cost, the man said. Don't you understand yet, St. Peter said. This is heaven. It's free. Well, where are the low-fat and healthy foods, the man asked, kind of timidly. That's the best part. You can eat as much as you like of whatever you like. You never get fat. You never get sick. This is heaven. So the man looks at his wife and says, you and your bran muffins. We could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> I love this story. On All Saints Day, when we remember those who have gone before us, and when we think about what the afterlife will be like, this joke gives us a little taste of what heaven will be like. So I'm glad that it made you smile. Although scripture does not promise that we will have mansions and amazing golf courses in heaven, it does talk about the heavenly banquet and the big celebration that heaven will be. Our scripture for today comes from Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible, and much of what we know about heaven comes from this book. This, this book in the Bible has several passages that describes just what heaven will be like, and our passage for today is one of those, and it tells us three important things about heaven. First, all people are welcome. There is no group that is excluded, and everybody will celebrate together. There was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands standing before Jesus, dressed in white and holding palm branches, are clues that a big celebration is happening in heaven. Second, no one will want for anything. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. Now, I don't see any golf courses promised there, but after this week's torrential rains, it sounds like playing conditions are going to be pretty good in heaven. The point is that the things that worry us in our world are not a problem in heaven. And finally, there will be no suffering in heaven. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The things that grieve us or depress us will not exist in heaven. All our wounds will be healed and all our scars will disappear. What a comfort that is. In an article that she wrote, Kay Warren, wife of Pastor Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, tells the story of a layover that she had in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. She was traveling with a friend, and on the way to their gate, they heard patriotic music 
and saw a group of people waving American flags, cheering. A number of returning troops were expected, and this was their welcoming committee. Kay and her friend had time before their next flight, so they grabbed flags and joined in. At first, there were just a few soldiers. Everybody whooped and waved their flags. Then the pace picked up as dozens of men and women in uniform came barreling through. Everybody repeated, welcome home. We're so glad you're back. We appreciate you so much. Some soldiers wiped away tears. Others displayed huge self-conscious smiles. It was beautiful. Then it was time for Kay and her friend to catch their flight. On the plane, they spoke of their opportunity to participate in this sweet moment of coming home. It was impossible not to draw the obvious spiritual parallels. These soldiers had taken oaths of faithfulness and service. They had fought courageously and lived with deprivation and danger, all for the good of our nation. But great as the United States is, as Christians, we have a greater allegiance. Like soldiers, we also take oaths of fidelity, sacrifice, and service. We make promises at our baptism, our confirmation, and when we join a new church. Our promises are to a kingdom that is eternal, a place where there is never a mistake in leadership, where justice flows down like a river, where poverty, disease, terror, hunger, and greed have no power. Scripture teaches us about the welcome and the rewards that we will receive when our earthly battle is over. Artists, writers, and theologians have all taken stabs at imagining what those moments of heavenly welcome will look like. And on the plane that day, Kay and her friend visualized the moment when they would step into eternity. Kay's friend said, if I get there first, I'll be on your welcoming committee. I'll be jumping up and down and screaming, you made it. I'm so proud of you. Kay laughed and responded, oh, you're not going to beat me. I'll be there before you. Remember, I'm older. I'll be at the head of the line to greet you. For a moment, heaven was more real to them than the stale airline coffee in their styrofoam cups. They laughed. But Kay realized something profound and holy. She writes, each of us fights unseen battles every day. And each believer is a secret soldier locked in battle. The bravest person you know might be your husband or wife or neighbor or coworker who goes on fighting. How much could we lighten the load for another just by telling them how brave we think they are? Warren concludes by encouraging each of us to celebrate with and to encourage each other every day. Today, we gather both in our sanctuary and online to support each other in our grief because we are all grieving on this All Saints Day. Over the last months, we have lost church members, we have lost loved ones, we have lost many things that made our lives so much sweeter. Time with family and friends, valued routines. We live in the hope of a heaven that we have only glimpsed. We trust in a God who is always faithful. Regardless of who wins the election this week, we know that our earthly politics are flawed and will always be flawed. So I encourage you 
to remember and to hold on to God's heavenly promise and to share that promise by being kind, generous, and loving with those you encounter. Live always with compassion and gratitude. Amen. Now, Caroline and I will be reading a list of cherished church members and loved family of church members who've passed over the last 16 months or so. Harlan Murray. Betty Jones. Janice Whitney. Dave Forsland. Linda Vest. Sue Kosh. Al Paul. Stuart Lawson. Daisy Smith. Margaret Gregory. Marianne Mapes. Elizabeth Rodiger. Oliver Ronald Teich. Mindy Wong. Victor Catalano. Patricia Ryer. Thomas O'Malley. Anatoly Sorotkin. Kareem Sayal. Robert G. Macquarie. Debbie Julian. Edward M. Kaufman. Brian Baker. Jim Mandel.
we remember that communion is a sacrament of community. As we take communion, we participate in the heavenly banquet that our scripture talks about. As we eat the bread and drink the cup, we strengthen our bond with Jesus Christ and his body, the church. So know that whenever or wherever you take this sacrament, whether you are with others in our sanctuary or whether you are alone in your house, you take the bread and the cup with all of God's people who have come before, those who are with us now and those who are yet to come. Remember that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall never hunger. Those who believe in me shall never thirst. Sisters and brothers, this is the joyous feast of the people of God. And ours is an open invitation to you with much faith, with little or no faith. From whatever spiritual pilgrimage you journey, come to know the Christ within and about you in this fellowship of communion today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, in the company of all who hunger for spiritual food in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know and receive you through the risen Christ, that we may stand in awe of his work, that we may live in unity with him and each other, that we may glow with his light, that together we may proclaim our unison proclamation. The spirit of the, the Lord, Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We recall that it was on the night of his betrayal and desertion and on the eve of his death that Jesus gathered together with the disciples for the Passover feast. And at dinner, he took the bread. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper that night, Jesus took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he blessed it and he offered it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in my memory. So I invite you to take your communion packet, peel off the first layer to get to your wafer. Take and eat all of it. This is Christ's body, the bread of life for all of us. And now I invite you to peel off the second layer and take this, the cup of Christ, the blood of salvation. Drink all of it in remembrance of him. Let us now pray together our unison prayer of communion, which is printed up right behind me on the wall. Thank you, O Lord, for nourishing and renewing us with the presence of Christ. Continue to strengthen and increase our love for one another and care for the world, that we may be your angels, drawing the world closer to the realization of your earthly realm. In Christ we pray. Amen.
Let us now join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us bow our heads for the benediction. And now go into the world in peace, declaring the praises of God who has called you out of darkness into wonderful light. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope through the grace of Jesus Christ, amen. Something's wrong with this. Something's screwed up with the thing. Yeah. So, um, I'll, Colleen.